Hello everybody, back again. This is a video I wanted to do for some time, kind of showcasing all the different generations of Arcade 1UP and uh, kind of make a timeline of when these different cabinets came out and kind of how what they came with and some of their shortfalls at some times and just different things that we've experienced along the way. Uh, I started collecting these in 2018 of December and you know that was a few months after they were released uh, that's when i came on the scene you know collecting these so if some of this information is not correct feel free to correct me in the comments and i'll make the corrections but i uh, just wanted to make a, a timeline here of when these were released and also my opinion of what the best arcade one-up uh, cabinet has been so far so here we go this is what the lineup looked like guys when it started out um, just six cabinets um, it was five and then Pac-Man was kind of like they threw that one out there uh, I like the Pac-Man just because it's so different than all the others it's, it's I mean the yellow kind of makes it show up real good in your game room if you notice of course they all at that time had the generic shape to them um, arcade one up made this the shape of their cabinets which was fine we didn't um, have anything else so it seemed like it was great most of them had uh, between two and four games on them no, none of them had light up marquees and uh, that's what that's what we were looking at so we got asteroids centipede pac-man galaga Street Fighter and Rampage. The one cabinet I do not have it, from the first generation, well, there's a few. I don't have the Atari 12 in one, which uh, was a Asteroids cabinet with a centipede mix. Here's a picture of the Atari 12 in one. You can see the one side has um, centipede, the other side is decorated like Asteroids. Uh, I had 12 games on it. Um, the four that you didn't get with either Centipede or the Asteroids cabinet, you got um, Gravatar, Asteroids Deluxe, Liberator, and Quantum. So that was the only way to get those four games. I never chose to get this cabinet. Um, I didn't like the black uh, on it. Like the black, uh, I prefer the white Centipede cabinet. And uh, the, the control panel also has too much going on with the spinners and the trackballs. It looked more like a multi cade to me than a kind of like what I was going for so I try, I didn't get this one uh, the price on this one was $3.99 and it did include the riser also I do not have Asteroids Deluxe here's a picture of the Asteroids Deluxe this was sold by Costco it was a little different I believe it's the only arcade one up that ever came that was fully assembled so you would buy this thing it was in the box it was fully assembled to take it out it also came with a silly little stool which the next upcoming picture will show you there it is the little um, stool on the box it came with that no riser but it came with all the games that asteroids the asteroids cabinet had on it plus two additional games which was asteroids deluxe and um, what else to come with gravatar those were the games that came on this particular cabinet and there was a mistake I'm not sure if it was a mistake or what they call it it was a black it was called a black pac-man so like i said before i'm not sure if this was a mistake or if this is something they planned but you can see the the, the molding around it is actually a black color and not the red that the pac-man typically was um i think they were selling these like as a special edition type of thing i preferred the red so when i bought my pac-man i just bought the red one um so I guess we'll never get the full story on whether this was a mistake or if this is something they actually wanted to make as a special edition. So there you have it. That's all the Generation 1 cabinets. Um, like I said, none of them had risers at the time. They all sold for $2.99. I got most of mine at Walmart. The, uh, with the course, with the exception being that arcade or the uh, Atari 12 and one, which was uh, $3.99, but it did come with a riser. Now, as far as using a riser, I did not, I never did buy the arcade one-up risers. 
Uh, I thought they were a little bit too much money for what you got. So I will show you what I did instead. Here's a look at the riser that I built. Overall height of this is 14 inches and the game sits up 13 inches. So like there's a one inch lip around the entire thing of it. It's made with plywood on the outside and then you can see inside is um, two by four construction. And then this top is just uh, some one by pine that I made this, this shelf that goes around the perimeter of it. Just like that. And the bottom of it, I put the sticky feet. They're made out of rubber. I got those from Home Depot. And that caught, uh, keeps the machine from sliding around when you have it on a tile floor. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all mounted up. So there it is, all mounted up with the Galaga next to it to kind of compare. This riser I made a little taller than what the Arcade 1UP riser is. Uh, I, I, the numbers escape me at the, at the moment. Um, I think it's about an inch or an inch and a half taller just because I'm a taller person. Um, and I found out that that worked really good. I could build three of those risers for the cost of what one of the arcade one up risers costs. Uh, now with the price of lumber and stuff like that, you're probably, it's probably cheaper to buy the other. But um, at the time I, I thought to myself, I could just make the three and, and it'd be cost me the same as buying one. So that's what it looks like. And that's what I did for all my uh, generation one cabinets. I built those risers. Okay. And then we will be moving on to generation two. What's next? All right, so that brings us to Generation 2. Generation 2 came and I kind of had to decide. I thought to myself, I'm not going to be able to buy every one of these things they make. And I don't necessarily care for all the games they're making either. Um, I liked all the games in the first generation, so it was no problem to, to buy all those. But the second generation list came out and I wasn't real thrilled with what I saw. Um, I, the Space Invaders kind of popped to me because, to be honest, the reason I bought that was just because I liked the way it looked. Uh, a lot of times we talk about uh, how many games are on a cabinet. I guess they sold this with two games, but really, I would say, I think this is the only cabinet that really only has one game on it, Space Invaders. Now you got Space Invaders Black and White and Space Invaders Color, so I guess they call that two games. but. Come on now, it's the same game. But the cabinet to me looked great. I thought the yellow trim and the front kick plate where it didn't have the names of the games, it actually just had that guy on there. I thought the whole thing really looked cool. And that's what really sold me on that. And uh, I wanted another game anyway, so I figured that'd be a good one. And then the other one I was looking forward to was Final Fight. Um, it came with Final Fight, Ghosts and Goblins, 1944 and Strider. The two generation, two games that I do not have um, are Mortal Kombat. And there's the picture of the Mortal Kombat, um, another second generation game. It uh, just wasn't a game for me. Uh, I just didn't care for that type of game and I didn't want that in my arcade. So there you have it. There's a picture of the Mortal Kombat. And the other one that I don't have is Golden Tee. And there you go, there's a picture of the Golden Tee golf game. Uh, this is the first time, I believe, that a game came with a matching riser. So it has that matching riser and a light up marquee was also standard on this. It also came with a HAP trackball, which was uh, an upgraded trackball over what we saw before. So I didn't quite get why they had this game. This was like a bar type of game, but they seemed like they wanted to go ahead with it. So I think it's pretty successful for them. Some other Generation 2 games that came out at the same time. Another Costco special. It was a Pac-Man machine that came with a matching riser, a light-up marquee, and a stool. And the price of this was $350. They also did the same with the Mortal Kombat. Um, light-up riser or light-up uh, marquee, matching riser, and stool. Kind of uh, made you feel sorry for buying it when it first came out because this deal from Costco for $50 more. You, 
everything you got at the riser and the light up marquee kind of made you have some buyer's remorse so there's your generation two cabinets and uh, things are going good moving right on to generation three coming up okay so by the time generation three got here looked like there was only uh, fewer games now if you haven't guessed already I, I tend to like the older games from uh, early 80s to the mid 80s um, once it get, we get into the 90s uh, I'm really not interested in much um, but generation 3 they had Marvel superheroes there it is the Marvel superhero cabinet they had two of these two variations you could get the one variation was a limited edition that had a light up um, marquee and light up buttons and Sanwa controls and uh, the second generation or the second variation was just uh, no light up marquee and just the regular joysticks uh, I'm not sure how many they made of each Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles if you take a look here you notice it's a four player control deck which was a first and um, that, that was the game Turtles in Time and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles both came on that cabinet and uh, the one thing people were not happy with the opening song apparently was different than the arcade version they couldn't get the licensing to play the actual song that was uh, one thing people were not happy about on this cabinet at CES which is an electronic show if you're not familiar um, the president of arcade one up had this machine underneath of a sheet and they kind of unveiled it like an unveiling um, of something special and when he did it was incredible uh, we had seen nothing like it before um, it was uh, it was great it was so exciting that it was the first machine they used the cut out sides so the machine actually had the correct shape for what the Star Wars machine was um, there was so much uh, neat stuff about this machine of course it had the light up marquee and uh, but they actually went in-house and they built their own flight yoke so this was this was unlike anything we'd seen um, it's not a joystick it's not something you can just buy and put in there they, they actually made that for this game and uh, it was really cool and then not to mention all the um, side art was really nice on this uh, just the whole thing all together just was really an exciting time when this came out even the riser was matching and the riser was taller than all the other risers um, to kind of get you up to the right level of playing the game uh, it was also the first time I think generation 3 is when they came out with the volume control where you could move the the switch to control the volume whereas before you only had two settings high and low All right, so that takes care of Generation 3. And, um, you know, after that Star Wars, they had some big shoes to fill. So now we're up to Generation 4. And the only machine I have from Generation 4, like I said, I had to start getting a little more choosy on what I wanted to, to buy. And also, you know, what matched my interests. So Generation 4... Um, the first I'll say is Burger Time. Now, since the beginning, I believe it was in Generation 1, on their website, they were teasing, or not teasing, but advertising that they were going to also have Karate Champ. And this was supposed to be a Karate Champ machine. But, for what, one reason or another, uh, the Karate Champ machine never kind of made it and on the karate champ machine was also they listed burger time was on there and everybody kind of said i guess wrote them letters or, or let them know that burger time really was the more popular game they should make a burger time cabinet instead of karate champ so this went into it was delayed for several uh, for 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 i guess a couple of years until generation four came along and then burger time was finally released and when it was due to come out i was very excited about it i thought well this is going to be another home run for them because uh, they're doing everything right they they got the sides that are cut out just like the arcade machine was you know it's it's specific to burger time and it looked great they got the great decal on there comes with a matching riser light up marquee um, 
and then a couple of the games I really like, which are Burger Time and Karate Champ, both fans of those games. Um, the, the machine also has Caveman Ninja and Bad Dudes. Um, I do not really like either of those games that much. Now, this is one of the where some problems started showing up for them. Um, it's a vertical monitor, as you can see, which is what Burger Time requires, and also Karate Champ requires vertical monitor. But um, Caveman Ninja and Bad Dudes need a horizontal monitor. So, amongst the community, there was some uh, people weren't happy. Like, you know, why are we playing horizontal games on vertical monitors? Type of kind of talk. I didn't really care since it was two games I'm never going to play anyway. Also on this machine there was a problem with the the gates. They they shipped out with eight-way gates and um, to play this Burger Time and Karate Champ well you have to have a four-way gate but in order to play Caveman Ninja and Bad Dudes you need an eight-way gate so you kind of need both on one machine. They did remedy the problem and they did send out everybody that bought one of these machines an octagonal gate which allows you to play the game better it kind of um, locks into place and you're up down left right a little better um, it's it's still not ideal um, so what I did on this one I just put a four-way gate on the player one and if I uh, if I'm playing this uh, I just use the four-way gate so it's not a four-player machine people see the four joysticks and think it's four player it's only two player um, karate champ uses um, a set of two to play the game so I would use this for one player and I would use this for two player that's why it has four joysticks okay okay real quick one other thing I forgot to mention about burger time another another nice feature that they did with this generation 4 uh, they actually use a piece of T molding for the control panel so this this control panel going around here um, they actually used a red piece of T molding, uh, unlike the um, like on the, all the previous generations. It was like a, co a color piece of tape or plastic tape that just sticks on. Um, the T molding actually gets pounded into the to a groove, and it's it actually it feels a little nicer and it looks a little nicer too in person. I think Generation Four or this machine is when they f started doing that. You can. Let me know if they did that previously or not. But it's just another nice little touch they did on this machine, which, which was a, um, made it one of their top contenders for me. NBA Jam was also a Generation 4 game. This is a picture of a Costco NBA Jam. The only difference being is it came with that topper thing there, and, and the controller tops were a bit little basketballs instead of just uh, the regular tops for NBA Jam. And then we have Golden Axe, another four-player cabinet. You can see the large control panel there. This game, uh, I don't remember the price, but it was relatively, it was a good price and sold out pretty quick. They just have recently re-released it at a higher price. So guys that got this early, got the good deal. Then we have the Frogger game. And uh, this had a light-up deck protector, which is pretty cool. It kind of illuminated the control panel. And... Um, the machine looked good and everything, but the, they really blew it with the song. The Frogger song is kind of iconic, and it's all part of playing the game. It's got some weird corny song they put on there. I guess licensing problems or something, they couldn't get the rights to it. But uh, if you don't have that song, then to me, you don't have Frogger. So this was a pass for me. So that's Generation 4. Now from here on out, I kind of get confused as to where the generations start and stop. I think this is still probably part of generation. Oh, Nelly. Then in August 2020, came along the Supreme Mortal Kombat cabinet. I don't even know where to begin with this one. It was very expensive. I think the price tag on it was like $700, which was the most expensive thing we've seen to date. And I uh, put me in the category of I don't get it. I guess there's a lot, they're collectible or something. I don't know. But August 2020 is when we got this beauty. Then in September 2020, if you were in your Costco, you would see Super Pac-Man. 
which had the shape of the regular Pac-Man cabinet with the Super Pac-Man decal on the side. It was pretty neat. It had a lot of the games I already had. Uh, the one problem with this was the fire button to play Galaga and all those games was only mapped to the left button. But they did come up with a software patch to fix it so that both left and right buttons did fire. And then they said it couldn't be done, but they did it. There's your Miss Pac-Man machine. It was in August, or I'm sorry, October 2020. Different uh, stores had different game lists on it. Walmart is the cabinet that did, that did not have Dig Dug, and I wanted Dig Dug. Um, Best Buy it was the one with Dig Dug, and uh, I missed out on it. I never got my Miss Pac-Man cabinet, but uh, it was a beauty. Wish you got one. December 2020 brought us Marvel vs. Capcom. Then November 2020 we had this Outrun cabinet. They came out with the seated version first. Um, I, this was a pass for me all around. It had the, the car that they used is a completely different car than in the game. And if you're used to playing this game, if it's nostalgic for you, it to me it, it missed the mark. I mean, how can you, that'd be like that'd be like operating a a, a square Pac-Man around the board and saying it's the same thing. It's the completely wrong car. So, uh, I, I, I no no thank you. January 2021 we got Big Buck Hunter, and that was uh, the first light gun game that Arcade One Up did. And to me, it seemed like a success. It seemed like everything worked the way it was supposed to work, and it was fun, and people liked it. So uh, count that one as a, as a success. And uh, there you go. March 2021, we got the Capcom Legacy Cabinet. I'm not really sure of all the games on here, but they also have a, a Mortal Kombat style also. That's called the... Um, the Midway Legacy Cabinet. And there it is. Uh, it had the Mortal Kombat graphics on it, but it had a lot of neat games on it, like uh, like Tapper was on there, Tubin, which was like a little rafting game, a lot of different kinds of games on there. They also put Paperboy on here, which I can't figure that one out. That game absolutely stinks on this cabinet with using a joystick. Uh, and I've been, after, I've been writing them to please make a Paperboy using the Star Wars controller. It's basically the same controller, but with handlebars. And then in April 2021 we got the stand-up version of the Outrun. Same thing except for it's a stand that comes on a riser with the pedals instead of the bench. So now that brings us to my latest machine which is the Tempest machine and um, this is my like I said this is my latest this is the last arcade one up I bought and um, it's pretty good. The, the reason um, it's kind of like a little bit of a waste because there's a lot of games on here that I already have. Um, they have this, here's the games list. We all know the games list by now. But basically, the only games I have not had, don't have, is uh, this one Aka Ara, uh, Asteroids Deluxe, Liberator, Gravatar, and Space Duel. So for the sake of five games, um, I bought this. It's 12 games, but I basically have all the other ones. The one thing I don't like about this machine is now we're starting to get into a control panel that looks like this. Spinners, trackballs, multiple buttons, things everywhere. Um, part of the arcade one-up appeal to me in the beginning was that there wasn't a whole lot of that on, on the control panels. E each game only had a couple games on it. So the control panels were set up for those games. It was more like an arcade uh, type of game. And uh, now that you, this is more like a multi-cade. Uh, I, I still like it. I still like the shape of it and everything like that. The trackball on this is far much an approved um, than the first generation trackball. Same with the spinner. Um, I personally feel no need to upgrade this spinner. This spinner works really nice. In the beginning, the spinner on the asteroids did not work well at all. So um, there were aftermarket companies that made them. Uh, Glenn's Retro Show is one, and he also made trackballs for the centipede machine because they were no good. This trackball I like. This is okay. And Plus, to tell you the truth, I don't play any of the trackball games on this because I have the centipede machine that I use for that. Uh, the 
coin door, which was a sticker. There's mixed reviews about that. I happen to like it. I like it a lot better than the the, the games list on the front. I'd rather see a, a fake sticker coin door than stickers of all the different games in the machine. So they're, they're both stickers. I'd rather have that sticker. I think it looks better. So this game I feel they did a nice job with. I didn't really need it because none of those games that I didn't have, I really, I could live without any of those. Um, but the the shape of this machine kind of sucked me in. It's iconic. Um, I remember that from being a kid and I thought it was just neat. That's something I'd like to have in my game room. So that's why I bought the Tempest. Okay, so that brings me to what I feel is the best Arcade 1UP cabinet of all time. And I will unveil that in a second here. And um, I'll give you my reasons why I think that. So let's see what it is. And just like at CES, we unveil it. There it is. Star Wars. I think this is the best Arcade 1UP cabinet of all time. It is not my favorite game, I'll say that. Um, I do not even like the movie Star Wars. But this game, um, for everything that it is, um, it, was, it was different at the time. The shape sides, the, the beautiful artwork on the side, they made a new controller. And most important, which I think we can't say about all the games, is there was really no problems with this game. They released this game and it played wonderful. Um, it had extra setting screens in there. You could change some settings of the games. And this game worked perfectly from the, the beginning. Unless you actually had a little physical problem. But there was no, no mess ups on their part. They got this one 100% right, right out of the box. And that's why all those things combined. I call this the um, best arcade one-up machine that they have made to date. Now... There's one machine that they're making, and it has not been released yet. That may bump this down to number two. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, stay tuned. It's coming. So if I'm calling Star Wars the best, you may ask yourself, what's my favorite? Well, my personal favorite game that they've ever made, and the one I play the most of, is... I will unveil it. Centipede. This is the game I play the most of and I like the best. And if I had to get rid of all my other ones, I probably would get rid of all those and keep this one. Um, just the kind of games that are on it, I like it the best. You can see I add the lit up marquee, the Glenn's Retro Show trackball. Atari Volcano buttons. So that's it. Thank you for watching.